Hi there, it's Lock Ripper here, and I'm going to talk to you about insect protection in case of a plane crash or a breakdown. Excuse me, this was written by uh, Brian Digelman, and he talks about insect protection. A smudge fire started with dry materials and with green grass or about at it immediately will form smoke to help against insects, but the location of the camp and shelter will be most important. Now, try for a point that runs out into a lake on the side where an inshore breeze blows. On a sea coast, the dunes is just in front from the surf may be swarming with mosquitoes, but dry sand immediately above high tide line will have a breeze that will help keep them away. So basically what he's saying is you've seen some of these movies where they're sitting there and they're camping right on the beach and the mosquitoes are there and he's saying basically when you get kind of away from it up towards your dry sand to avoid the mosquitoes. Now then remember I'm talking about in case of plane crashes or a breakdown or a shipwreck or whatever else you are looking at these options here in a survival deal. Now in mountains and swampy areas of the north, get up on a ridge to make you camp. Avoid the low places. If you have taken insect repellent, the kind I've suggested, you will be in fair shape and safe. Now, in, there's all different types of insect repellent out there. There's Mother Nature's insect repellent. You can take cedar and rub the, the, the leaves from the cedar on your skin. It helps repel insects and stuff. So, there's many things you can use to kind of help keep the insects off of you in a situation. Now, he says that I've, uh, it is not possible, however, to fashion a makeshift shelter that is completely insect proof. So, people are like, man, we're going to get rid of them, we're going to insect proof. Nothing's totally insect proof. You're still going to have, many you open up that tarp. Or that door, whatever insects are going to get in, so you're still going to have chances of being bitten, but you can reduce the chances of insects. Because you know, in the swamplands and stuff at night, mosquitoes just will eat your life. I mean, they they can drain all the blood out, plus past diseases and other things. So now, if a plane crash or a broken down vehicle is a difficulty, here are some suggestions he's saying. The interior of the plane or vehicle may protect you from insects and ordinarily in places where they swarm the climate would neither excessively hot nor excessively cold. So it's got to be a happy medium in there. However, in screen cold or screen heat, both planes and vehicle interiors, if not smashed up, may be colder or hotter. Hear this colder or hotter than a shelter you can fashion outside. A great deal depends on what you have with you for warmth or shade. You hear that? It depends on what you have. Now, shade can be improvised under a plain wing or beside or under the vehicle out in the desert. Parachutes can be utilized in many ways. But in severe cold, consider that you may be able to stay warmer in a snow shelter or one of the snow and evergreen bouts than inside planes or vehicles. Ordinarily, you will be staying by the plane or car, not traveling, but this way you will be found more quickly, ordinarily, because there is situations where You've been there for several months, maybe. Maybe you feel that you have no choice but to travel and try to get to civilization. But ordinarily, in a situation, if they're looking for you, you want to stay close to where the crash site is and the broken down vehicle is. But you still need to make shelter to protect against insects and things in that area, as well as raising yourself up off the ground. Because not just insects you've got to worry about. It's also snakes, scorpions, and some of the other areas. You have other uh, things like leeches and stuff here. They leeches. Oh, yeah, leeches. You have leeches. You have other 
predators out there that will crawl up into the bed area with you. So you need to think about all this in protecting yourself in an inset environment as much as possible. Now, it says where to start. The chances are very good in any of these breakdowns that most other materials you need, at least for a few days, food is settled will be on hand. And the chance is that you left word where you were going and will be found. So you all, most, as a general rule, all planes have to have a route. <clears throat> as a general rule, people will tell them where they're going. As a general rule. As a general rule. Doesn't always happen. Something could happen. Storm will come up, knock you off trail. You can get lost. You can actually be 50 miles away from where you was, 100 miles away or 200 miles away. So there is options there you got to look at. Now, it says, though you can take time to make as comfortable primitive living quarters as the materials at hand will help provide improving improvising with chopped branches or lean sticks, though which such materials as cattails or willows are woven. So you can use the reeds from the willows, and this is talking about the weeping willows, basically. The weeping willows with the vines, as well as cattails, and there is great vines that grows out there in some of the areas. You'll find vines that you can wove and create a, a barrier with, as well. However, the man on the moon, on his way out or lost and trying to get out, has another, has altogether different problems. In all likelihood, he will use a shelter only one night at a time. He did not take time to gather food, water, and firewood, cook food, boil water, make up his bed in a shelter spot, and still have much time left to fashion more than the most primitive, most easily and quickly diverse shelter. Next morning, he's on his way again, and the shelter is discarded. But even then, you still need to create as much insect protection as you can. That's like saying taking the parachute, if you got a parachute with you, if you got some clothes with you that you can use that's not real heavy or thick or whatever that you can fix like a makeshift uh, insect tarp over you to help protect you from insects and stuff devouring you in the night is something you need to think about. Remember to stop traveling early enough so you can get to work done before it's dark. Basis on the type of terrain. If you must gather rocks or a lot of small twigs like willows, to make shelter, it will take longer by far than it will in dense forests of the mixed evergreen types. In uh, more desert areas, you're creating the rock formations and stuff to help barricade you from the weather and the wind and stuff. And again, you still need to figure out how you're going to keep yourself up off the ground enough in a makeshift environment and something other like some kind of material or something other that you can place over you to help keep insects from attacking you. Now, in uh, the dense forest areas, you can use uh, the twigs and the vines and stuff to pull uh, branches down to help create a barrier around a tree and stuff to help create your makeshift tent to also help protect you from the weather as well as the insects in that case. Now, suppose you're a traveler, lost or otherwise, if you have properly outfitted as suggested for a long trip, you will have a shelter with you. In a plane or vehicle difficult, this would be the case. In the event you deem it necessary to walk out, if you have a full-fledged backpack outfit with a three or four pound tent and light bag, you have no worries about shelter. Even without a pack, if a tent, light tent and bag are in the plane or vehicle, you can Converse lashes two packs in with you, and you certainly should, or if you must make a choice between tent and bag, make it in relation to where you are in a desert. You don't need a bag, but the tent would be valuable. In cold weather, you can run up makeshift shelter, and the bag is more, val more valuable. The fact is, is in any of this situation, shelter is a key ingredient for protecting against insects wherever you're at and you have to look at us that as well in a in event of a plane crash or your car or whatever there if you got to strip it down in order to help survive and make some makeshift things if you have cloth coverings on your seats you can sh sh 
scrape those cloth coverings off the seats and use them also to help create a makeshift tarp like thing over you with to help keep insects and things out. You are looking at this here. You gotta look also at your weight factor and your traveling factor, your food factor, and what knowledge you yourself possess and carry in the thing. If you are gonna stay close to the planes in the vehicle for a number of days, you need to think about how you're gonna collect water. You need to create a surrounding environment area of it as well to figure out where you're at basically and what you have close for food and water and also for insect protection as well as a shelter. So this is something you need to think about in a knowledge on something like that. Everything can be turned into something you use. A plane crash has a number of things in there. You can use it. You can strip the seats out. You can strip the cushions out. You can strip a number of things out. Same way with the car. You can take parts out of the engine. You can take hoses off of it. You can take this off of it. You can create a number of things to survive in a situation. You can use the battery and create you and, and create your makeshift thing to also help create things to keep you going in a situation with the battery as well in a situation. So surviving insect protection and shelter in a event of a plane crash or any other crashes is very important. So this is live prepper here. I want you to be safe, be happy. Bless you all.